Are you thinking of entering your first triathlon? If so, I bet you have got hundreds of questions flying around in your head. Well, don't worry, we're here to help. Today, I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked questions that I promise you pretty much all triathletes will have had at some point in their career. If you're a beginner, it's best to stick to short distance triathlons. So a sprint or a super sprint would be a good starting point. And some novice events even put on shorter distances for beginners. So say you're doing a super sprint triathlon, you need to be comfortable covering all of those distances. So that would be a 400 meter swim, a 20K bike and a 5K run. And then it's a good idea to replicate the actual feeling you're gonna have on race day by doing some brick sessions. And this is when you run straight off your bike. So put in a few of those. And also think about the swimming. So if you've entered an open water swimming triathlon, do make sure you've already practiced swimming in those conditions because trust me, there's gonna be enough new experiences on race day as it is. There are many things to consider when you're choosing your first triathlon and as we've already pointed out, distance is probably the most important one. Well, you can head to your local governing body, look on their website and into the search you can then put the distance you want to do and it's often a good idea to go by location. If you can find an event that's close to home, it's always nicer to sleep in your own bed the night before. And then with that, hopefully you'll be able to get more support so friends and family can come along and give you that moral support that you need on race day. And also don't forget to look at the terrain because if you've got a road bike, then you probably want to make sure that your triathlon is on the road. And if you're maybe not yet ready to swim open water, then look for a pool-based triathlon as well. All you need is a roadworthy bike, and when you turn up at the event, they'll check your brakes and that it's safe to ride. Other than that, any bike will do. And I've actually seen people doing triathlons on a fixed gear bike, mountain bike, even town bikes. So don't let those professionals on their really fancy bikes put you off. It is easy to get sucked into splashing out on a lot of expensive triathlon kit ahead of your first event, but please don't. There are just a few pair of essentials you need though. So starting out with a swim, that would be a pair of goggles, a swimsuit or tri suit, and then if it's a cold water swim, a wetsuit, but you can often borrow or hire these. And then onto the cycle, obviously you need a bike as we've mentioned. You need a helmet that meets the safety standards. And then as for clothing, if you're not wearing a tri suit, just some cycle shorts and a jersey you're comfortable with. And for footwear, it's entirely up to you whether you wear bike shoes or trainers. And onto the run, well that's the most straightforward as you simply need a pair of trainers, a running top and a pair of shorts. Do read the rules ahead of race day as they vary from event to event, but there are some rules that pretty much cover all triathlons. And one of the major ones is the drafting rule, unless obviously you're doing a draft legal race. This dictates the distance you have to remain behind the rider in front. And a pretty standard distance is 12 meters, but again, check, because that can vary. And another major rule is in transition. And the first one to remember is the mount and dismount line. So once you've picked up your bike, you must wheel it until you get to the mount line. You must pass this line and then you can get on your bike. Coming back, it's the same. So you must make sure you get off your bike before the dismount line and then run with your bike into the racking area. And when it comes to the racking area, the first thing you must remember to do is put your helmet on as you're not allowed to take your bike out of the rack until your helmet is on and securely done up. And again, reverse that so when you're coming back, make sure you securely put your bike away before you take your helmet off. And then finally, when you're actually out on the course, whether that's the bike or the run, it's great if you've got supporters there to cheer you on, but just make sure they know that they're not allowed to actually physically help you or give you any nutrition or anything. If you do need anything like that, then that's where the race officials come in. There are a lot of things to consider when it comes to timing. So work backwards, look at how far away the car park is from registration and race start, and then find out what time transition actually closes. So this is where you have to put your bike and all your kit ahead of your race. And then from that, I would say arrive an hour earlier. But obviously you need to consider if it's a large event, then there might be queues for registration, queues to use the bathrooms as well. So if you're in doubt, allow yourself plenty of time because there's nothing worse than being in a rush and trying to squeeze into your wetsuit in your hurry when you're hot and sticky. 
If you don't have a tri-suit, then you are going to need to get changed in at least one of the transitions. But it's worth noting that nudity isn't allowed in triathlon, so if you do need to completely strip off, you'll have to find the changing tent. If there isn't one, you're going to need to be discreet under a towel. Now, some people will change after the bike for the run. It is entirely personal preference, but I can't emphasize enough that if you're doing your first triathlon, comfort is key. If you're doing a short distance race, then hopefully you're not gonna need a bathroom break, but sometimes things don't go to plan. You'll find some athletes actually relieve themselves towards the end of the swim before exiting and getting onto the bike. And then most courses will have port loos en route, especially on the run course. So it is worth considering with this what you're going to wear. So if you've got a four piece tri suit, it's much harder to get out of in a hurry than a two piece would be. This is one of the most common worries when it comes to an open water triathlon, and understandably so, as you can't replicate this in training. So when you arrive, check out the course, and then stay away from the shortest route to the first buoy, as when the gun goes off, this is where the faster swimmers are going to be, and you're likely to get caught up in a washing machine effect if you're over there. So yes, you might be swimming slightly further, but trust me, you're actually gonna use less energy by going that route. But if that still sounds a little bit too intimidating, then look for a triathlon where they have a staggered start, and they let athletes a small group off every few seconds. If you get tired swimming front crawl, then there's no harm in doing a few strokes of breaststroke just to calm down and get your breath back. Backstroke, however, isn't recommended, as if you're on your back, the rescue team might well think you need help and will come over to see what you're doing. Plus, on top of that, you're not gonna be able to see where you're going, but if you really are sure you want to do some backstroke and you're doing a small race, then it might be worth speaking to the race organizers to check that it's okay. In the very short events, your body should have enough glycogen stores to get through the race without having to top it up. But if you're doing anything more than an hour, then it is worth considering taking on some extra fuel. Now, most races will provide food and drinks along the way, so try and find out beforehand what it is and you can practice with that in training. And then on the bike, it's a good idea just to have a drink there if you want it ready, and you also put some fuel in your top tube bag. And when it comes on to the run, if you're doing a longer distance race, it's a good idea to take some gels. You can leave them in transition and grab them as you head out. We've already touched on this slightly, but this is where you take your bike into transition so it's gonna be ready for you when you come out of the swim. So before heading in, you need to know your race number because this is probably where you'll end up having to rack your bike. You'll also want to have all the kit you need for your race, apart from obviously what you're starting in for the swim. Now that includes your helmet, which will need to be on your head and done up as they'll be checking these as you go through. If you are lucky enough to have friends and family who are gonna come along and support you for your race, make the most of it. Make sure that you prioritize yourself and manage their expectations as you're not gonna have the time or energy to run around finding them breakfast or coffees. And then try and suggest some places for them to watch. Transitions are a good place because obviously you're gonna be going through twice and they'll hopefully see the start and the finish from there. But if it's a lap course, then maybe you could get them to stand on a point where you know it might be a little bit tough just to give you that moral support when you need it. I've done my best to answer those commonly asked questions ahead of a first triathlon, but if you've got a burning question that I haven't covered, please let me know in the comments section below and we will do our very best to get back to you. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. Give us a thumbs up if you have and click on the globe to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. And if you're still in the training phase for your first triathlon, we've got a great video series for you down here. And if you want some more tips on the rules ahead of your first event, you can find a video for that just down here.